Okay, I mentioned that, was that the standard form is ax squared plus bx plus c. Just as a reminder. Now, in standard form, just by looking at it, doesn't tell us a whole lot about the function. Pretty much the only thing that we can figure out about the graph of the function, looking at it in standard form, is the y-intercept. Um, unless it's factorable, and if we can factor it, we can figure out our x-intercepts. Uh, but that's about all we can figure out looking at it in standard form. In vertex form, though, we can figure out very, very quickly and easily where its vertex is. Now, we started this whole unit by talking about how to find the vertex, finding the axis of symmetry, plugging that in, but then this is another way to find that vertex. Notice H has a minus in front of it, so you're going to change the sign when, you put, uh, when you're identifying the vertex. Okay, so if it's x plus 2 squared, then your vertex is at negative 2. If it's x minus 4 squared, your vertex is at x equals positive 4. Okay, That's, that one's always going to change sign. K is not. K is not going to change signs, but the x does. All right, so let's look at number one from your worksheet there. It is 2x squared plus 12x plus 26. We're still going to go through the process of completing the square. It's just going to look a little bit different. Okay, so instead of moving that 26 to the other side, we're not going to do that. Uh, we are going to complete the square, though, with our x terms. We leave the constant out of it, so I'm going to factor out that 2. I'm not factoring the 2 out of the 26. I'm just taking the 2 out of the 2x squared plus 12x. And the 26, instead of moving to the other side, is just getting bumped out of our parentheses. Okay, we're going to complete the square there. So 6 is our b, divided by 2 is 3. 3 squared is 9. I don't know why I put a plus right there. That's 2 equals. I was thinking about what I was getting ready to do. So we do add our 9 there. Okay, completing the square perfect square trinomial is always going to be plus the perfect square at the end. However, instead of adding 18 to the other side, remember we've got to multiply by the GCF, instead of adding that to the other side, we're going to keep it on this side, so we've got to subtract. This keeps it balanced, because we're doing everything on the same side, so when we completed the square first, we've got plus 18, but i got to keep that balanced, so i got to subtract 18 from the same side. Okay? Um, and then we need to simplify. So, factor the perfect square trinomial, x plus 3 squared, and 26 minus 18 is 8. So, our vertex is at negative 3, positive 8. Change the sign of the x. It was positive 3, so it's negative 3. And the constant on the end is your y. It does not change signs. And just as a reminder, this parabola opens upward. Because a is positive. I use B slash C as an abbreviation for because. <clears throat> okay, so this gives us a little bit more detail. It gives us another detail about our parabola as opposed to, um, and we started in standard form, so we can also say that our y-intercept is 0, 26. So we could draw a decent little sketch of this parabola, because we know how it opens, we know it's vertex, and we know it's y-intercept. We can at least get a general idea of what it looks like. Now, um, just like with some of the other things, you can check this. Plug it into your y equals. Uh, plug the original function into y1. 2x squared plus 12x plus 26. Okay, and then in your y2, plug your vertex form in and when you graph it 
If they are the same, then you should only see one parabola. You shouldn't see anything different show up after that first one graphs. Uh, and you can also look at your table and make sure that all your y values agree. That means you've got the exact same function in there twice. Okay, so you can always plug those in to catch any uh, careless mistakes. And then you can also confirm where your vertex is. Looking at the graph, you can tell that's at negative 3, positive 8, not positive 3, positive 8. Okay. Let's look at number 5. Number 5 is a little weird. y equals negative 2x squared plus 7. There's something missing out of this equation. The linear term is missing. We don't have just a plain x, so we actually can't complete the square on this one. Um, so if you technically wanted to put it in vertex form, you could write it like this, but subtracting 0 from x doesn't really do anything. So I really just put this one on here to show to you that there are some of them where they're sitting on the y-axis. Their axis of symmetry is the y-axis, um, so there's no completing the square to be done. Their vertex is the same as the y-intercept. Um, and this one opens downward because the leading coefficient is negative. Okay, um, I'm not going to bother with that one. Okay, let's look at number seven. Let's do another example with fractions. Because those tripped us up a little bit yesterday. Okay, so negative one fourth x squared plus x plus six. We got to pull out the negative one fourth. So when we pull out a negative one fourth from positive one, it leaves us with negative four. Now, you can do this in your calculator, uh, because I know that is kind of weird to think, but just remember, factoring out a GCF is division. So 1 divided by, you got to put negative 1 fourth in parentheses, or it won't do it right, okay, does give us negative 4. Or you can look at it from the perspective of if I distributed that back out, negative 1 fourth times negative 4 is going to give me a positive 1. All right, so let's complete the square. Our b is 4, divided by 2 is 2, squared is 4, technically it's negative 4 divided by 2. I just drop it because we still are not putting parentheses around our negative numbers before we square them. Uh, but technically it is negative 4 divided by 2, negative 2 squared is 4. So we're adding 4 inside of our parentheses. Don't forget though, we got to multiply by the GCF before we do anything with it on the end. So 4 times negative 1 fourth is negative 1, and we are subtracting negative 1. So I'll talk about what happens here in a second after we simplify. Uh, negative 1 fourth times x minus 2 squared is the factoring of a perfect square trinomial. Subtracting a negative is the same as adding a positive. So 6 minus negative 1 is the same as 6 plus 1. So we've got plus 7 on the end, meaning our vertex would be at positive 2, positive 7. So I would definitely check this one because it has so many little details that we got to worry about. Okay. Uh, negative 1 fourth x minus 2 squared plus 7. All right. So there's the graph. I don't see another one. I'm going to double check in my table. All my y values match up. Okay. Um, let me talk to you a little bit about some other kinds of questions they may ask you on the final exam. They love to ask you to compare two functions. Okay, so they may give you two equations and ask you uh, what's the relationship between these two functions or how do we translate one to the other, what do we have to do to it. Uh, one of the easiest things to do, guys, is just to plug them in to your y equals 
and then look at how their graphs have compared. Now let me show you a little detail you may not know that your calculator does. Say, for example, they gave us this original equation, and then maybe they gave us 4 times x minus 2 squared plus 7. Okay? And they wanted us to kind of compare and contrast those graphs. Now, I don't know if you've ever wondered, what are these slashes on the far left side of our y equals? Well, you can actually move your cursor over there. And when you press enter, it's going to scroll through some options. So the first time you press enter, it shows up with a thicker line. That's actually going to graph that function with the thicker line. We're going to come back to that in a second. If you press enter again, you'll see a triangle that will actually shade. That's for inequalities. That's when it's greater than. If you press it again, it'll be a lower triangle, so that's less than. If you press it again, not going to lie, I don't really know what that one does, nor do I know what the next one does, but, you know, it's all good. I know what the important ones are. And you can actually do a dashed line, okay? But I'm going to have this one graph with a thicker line so that when they graph, I mean, hopefully I'm paying attention to which one goes first, but... Um, when they graph, I can clearly distinguish between the two. So here's the first one, that's the negative one-fourth, and there's the second one. Notice how it, it graphs a thicker, darker line, okay? Um, so if we're comparing and contrasting, we can see they have the same vertex. Uh, one of them, the one-fourth, is a lot wider than the fourth, okay? So that's something to know about functions, when there's a one-fourth in front of it, or if there's a smaller number, a number less than one, it's going to make the function wider. If there's a number bigger than one, that four makes it skinnier or it makes it taller, which is the way you want to look at it. Um, and then obviously one of them has the negative, the negative one-fourth opens downward, the positive four opens upward. Okay, but I really just wanted to point out what your calculator will do. Uh, to help you distinguish between the two. And so maybe if you're comparing three for some reason, then make one of them a dashed line, okay? Um, but I just wanted to show you that feature because a lot of people don't really know about that. And then once you press clear, it resets it, okay? So you don't have to worry about changing it all the time. Once you press clear, then it resets your y equals to the way that they were, okay? All right, um, so... What I want you to do is, on your worksheets, I want you to write those equations in vertex form. I want you to then identify the worksheet, or, or worksheet, doing worksheet, identify the vertex, and then uh, tell me whether the parabola opens up or down for each of those problems. Okay? Some of them are easier, some of them are a little bit more difficult.